the meaning of Islamic buildings. A fascinating picture has emerged. I'm going to use this new research to explore what happened when East met West in Europe. If there is one place which challenges the stereotype of the treacherous, bloodthirsty Moor, it's here, the Alhambra Palace in Granada. The Alhambra is one of the most complete medieval Islamic palaces in the whole world. It was built by the Muslim kings of Granada in the 14th century at the height of their power. Its name means the red one because the dark surrounding soil has given its stones an earthy reddish hue. The marvel of the Alhambra is its mystery. Not a single account of life here survives. All its archives were incinerated in the fires of the Inquisition. But the Catholics couldn't bring themselves to destroy this place. The Alhambra is one of the wonders of the medieval world. And by preserving it, they've kept a box of secrets that we can use to decode the civilization that built it. Inside the palace walls, the architecture is breathtaking. Although the aesthetic of this courtyard is quite cool and minimal now, in its heyday, it would have been a riot of colour. Granada was very famous for producing silks. And you've had silk hangings billowing in the breeze and silk cushions and silk rugs where people laid out to eat their dinner and to listen to music. And in fact, it's only when you get down to rug level that you appreciate one of the bits of magic of the place. Because from down here, this pool acts like a kind of infinity mirror and the whole of the palace just looks as if it's suspended in water. Every detail of the palace decoration seems to be part of a scheme. Row upon row of intricate geometric patterns are carved into the woodwork of the walls and windows. This is the throne room. It was the symbolic centre of the palace, and here the Sultan had a kind of psychological advantage over his subjects. Whereas he'd have stood here in an eerie silhouette, they'd have been blinded by the light that came streaming in through these brightly coloured stained glass windows. The 19th century writer Washington Irving observed, It's impossible to contemplate this abode of oriental manners without feeling the early association of Arabian romance. One almost expects to see some dark eye sparkling through the lattice. The abode of beauty is here, as if it had been inhabited but yesterday. But this is far more than just a beautiful building. There's a specific reason why it feels so harmonious. The men who built it had a knowledge of complex geometry which had originated in the ancient world. The first man to set down these mathematical principles was the Greek philosopher Pythagoras. Pythagoras saw numbers everywhere in the universe, but his brilliance was to understand the importance of the ratio between them. Professor Antonio Fernandez Puertas has spent his life studying the Alhambra. He's discovered that the whole of the building, from the ground plan to the wall decoration, is based around one single ratio. I think it's, everything is so perfect because it's, everything is under control of the proportion. And very, very simple. You notice that there is something magic about these buildings. There is something marvelous in your surroundings. It's very, very simple. It's the relation between the ground and the elevations of the buildings. It's as simple as that. The king ordered a new palace. He has a limited area to build the palace. To west, east and south, he was limited. Then he did something genius, ingenious and beautiful. 
The king of Granada asked his architects to harmonize each and every space within the palace according to a single set of proportions, a family of rectangles, each related to the other. If you want to get proportional rectangle, you have the same base. Take the diagonal, put it up, uh, yes. and uh, you've got successive rectangle, proportional rectangle. The key to the Alhambra's design is the simple relationship between the side of a square and its diagonal. If we use the diagonal to make a rectangle, and then the diagonal from that rectangle to make another, we get a progression of rectangles. The fourth rectangle is double the size of the first, and the diagonals in this sequence are in fact the square roots of two, three, four, and five. A magical sequence. And are they doing all this just with two set squares oh, wow. and a piece of string? Yes. That's very clever. Yes. Every part of the intricate network of spaces, all the courtyards, the hallways, the placement of every column, was designed using inspired variations of this proportional system. Proportion is also in the elevation. You have the kiosk. Here you build a square, and with the diagonal, you swing it up. Nothing violated this incredibly elaborate system. The Alhambra is a triumph of mathematics as much as it is of aesthetics. Mathematical ingenuity is the root of its beauty. But no one talks about this. Everyone looks at the Alhambra just as an aesthetic experience. When you go to a concert and you listen to Mozart, you listen to uh, Beethoven, you listen to uh, Verdi, you don't know perhaps music, but you notice that there is something magic. Yes. It happens with that the same. You feel it. The Alhambra is so enchanting, it's all too easy to view it as a fairy tale palace, isolated from history. But that is romantic nonsense. This palace was the product of a very real, very gritty history. The Alhambra was built by a religious empire which, at the pinnacle of its power, dominated land from China to Africa. An empire which had the wealth and intellect to build such masterpieces. An empire whose history goes back to the deserts of 7th century Arabia. <laughs>